Okay, fasten your seatbelts. Tomorrow will be a roller coaster of a day. The fate of the president's health care law is not the only thing riding. The historic fate of the United States Attorney General Eric Holder could also hang in the balance. The full House will vote on whether to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt or not. And today, the battle already getting really bloody, and that was just a meeting to set up the rules for tomorrow's vote. Why are we steamrolling ahead on a matter of such gravity? In my opinion, the answer is plain and simple. Politics. Please explain uh, why it is that you refuse to allow the Democrats in all this time to have a single witness. Why you didn't at least call in former Attorney General McCasey. Why you have not talked to the head of the Phoenix uh, ATF, who certainly knew everything and seemed to have operated all on his own. It sounds like a child's game. It's a crazy idea. I think basically the Attorney General has just come to a point where, you know, he's saying, well, where, where, where does this end? He's not, he's not asked for an end to the investigation. He's just trying to get, say, okay, what, what am I going to... I think gonna what he's trying to figure out is whether to keep on moving the goalposts. Yeah, right. Not, not keep moving the goalposts, moving the stadium. Right. We keep moving the goalposts closer and he can't seem to kick a two-yard field goal. We're getting ready to stain this institution with this particular kind of undertaking. And I, 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 I for one... Mr. Hastings, I may say the stain, the stain will be on the Attorney General's office for refusing to deliver documents that he knows he could deliver, that he has offered to deliver, but only in return for, if you will, a plea bargain. House? I believe Mr. Cummings has not lived up to his promise. I wish he had to the Terry family. I believe in spirit he thinks he has, but in reality, the truth, the full truth, is too painful for, in fact, him to take on his own attorney general. And I think that's one of the problems that goes on in every administration. In my 61 years of life, no one, no one has ever questioned my integrity. You just did. And I resent what you said. I do. Deeply. And tonight, a growing list of House Democrats saying they will break ranks with the party. They say they will vote yes to holding the Attorney General in contempt. Jonathan Strong from Roll Call joins us. Nice to see you, Jonathan. Good evening. Um, a head count, any idea how many Democrats are going to vote with Republicans tomorrow? Uh, Congressman Adam Schiff from California estimated 24 earlier today at a press conference. He's a Democrat. So, you know, he would seem to know a little bit about that. We've heard other counts a little bit lower than that. But um, the comparison is 2007 when Republicans lost three votes. Uh, Democrats were holding two White House aides in contempt and three Republicans switched sides. I think this is a very significant repudiation depending on how large that number gets. I mean, every vote really hurts. Any Republicans defecting and going to vote no on contempt that you know of? I have not heard of any Republicans. So no. they'll get, so get tw a hand for 20 to 24 uh, Democrats. I'm expecting 20 to 30. Uh, well, there's a letter that uh, signed June 3rd, uh, 2011, um, by uh, 31 House Democrats to the president urging the Department of Justice to hand over the documents. So I guess that was sort of a uh, a warning, a foreshadowing right. that the Democrats would be, some Democrats would be breaking ranks. Yeah, now one uh, person who signed that letter, Jim Cooper, has said he's going to vote against contempt. He's on the oversight committee and he holds some sway with some of the signers. So that kind of, I mean, it means that the whole list of those signatories is not going to all vote for contempt. What does it mean um, if, to, uh, I mean, the, the Republicans hold the House anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. they've got the majority. But what does it mean to have these Democrats defect? It's, it's a couple things. I mean, it, this is such a momentous vote, and it's, uh, it's become such a partisan slugfest over the last couple of weeks that to switch sides and go with the other party, it takes a, I mean, you really hate to do it if you're, if you're one of those Democrats. I mean, you don't want to do it lightly. At the same time, they're thinking about their districts back home. They represent places where President Obama is unpopular. And the NRA is scoring the vote, and that endorsement means a whole lot to them as a signifier that they're one of them where they live and not a, a Washington Democrat. Which is Representative John Dingo, who uh, has a big NRA uh, backer. He says that he does not, uh, that he's going to vote no on contempt, and he does not view this as a Second Amendment issue. So the NRA, you know, is, uh, that keeps surfacing in this whole discussion. It's also significant because Dingell in past, in a past, life as chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee was a 
particularly zealous defender of Congress's oversight authority. And for him to side with the administration's broad use of executive power here was surprising to me. Is there any chance this will not happen? No. None. Well, there um, will be. So there's no like there's no meeting at two I mean, o'clock this morning coming up or anything. You know, there is a chance if the white if if the Justice Department brought the documents over and handed them to Daryl Issa, then they would cancel it. But today, the entire day, there was no communication between the two sides. Yesterday, they had a meeting where Justice reiterated their offer from a week ago. And Republicans dismiss that. Well, the, with the Democrats, what uh, the Department of Justice and Eric Holder says, they say nothing is in the documents at all, absolutely nothing, and they won't turn them over. And so people are suspicious. If there's nothing in them, why don't you turn them over? Unless it's to sort of protect the the, the privilege, because you want to protect it uh, for this administration in future. Um, except that you could turn them over and still say this is to preserve the privilege. I would call that a, a looming question because. You know, while White House Press Secretary Jay Carney has said that this is entirely about principle, it's not exactly like there's a tremendous amount of precedent to withhold these types of documents with executive privilege. From my research of the, you know, the court decisions and, and, and whatnot, they're kind of standing on a little bit of shaky legal ground to withhold these well, documents. They could also hand them over and they could have an agreement that this in no way uh, waives the right to assert the privilege and yet turn them over and preserve the privilege. They, they could do that. They could do that. Anyway, well, tomorrow, what time is the vote expected? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what time. All right, well, we're going to have a very <laughs> busy day tomorrow, indeed. Uh, Jonathan, thank you. All right, thanks. Coming up behind the scenes, what is behind